official that I'm transferring from Indiana University. Then sophomore George Leach says he too will follow the general. I will definitely leave to go with Coach Knight. And then Bob Knight's son Pat, an assistant coach, makes it clear he's gone too. I just assume I got fired with him. You know, he hired me, they fired him, they fired me. As reporters scramble, word circulates that as many as nine players may be ready to leave the team. Athletics director Clarence Doninger is forced to cancel scheduled interviews when a number of players show up at his office with some big questions. We spoke with Brandon Doninger and gave him our side of the story of what we wanted, and we want those two guys to be in the system because we don't want to start from scratch. Those two guys are assistant coaches Mike Davis and John Treloar. And after the meeting, players, including Dane Fife, are more upbeat. Just restated what we said before. We want John Trelo or Mike Davis as head coach, and they said they'd work on it like they did yesterday. Clarence Doniger and IU Vice President Terry Claypax then meet behind closed doors, and assistant coach Mike Davis waits for word on his future. You would accept that challenge if, if given the opportunity? Well, you know, if, 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 if the players want me to, to be their coach, then I would do it for a year. And back, back live in uh, Bloomington, the headline here today, folks, it seemed to change every hour on the hour. Just an amazing scene here at Assembly Hall. At this point, we are still awaiting word from Athletics Director Clarence Doninger about naming an interim coach. The question is, will it be someone from within, like assistant coach Mike Davis, or will it be someone from outside? Many names being tossed around. Tom Davis, former coach from Iowa State. Charlie Spoonauer, former coach from St. Louis, as well as maybe Bobby Crimmins, the former Georgia Tech. Uh, head coach or even Larry Bird no one knows at this point again we had an interview set with Clarence Doninger this afternoon to ask him those questions but because of that impro uh, impromptu rather meeting with the players he canceled all of his interviewers interviews so it's all speculation at this point John back point. to you John back to you all right thank you very much Rory and as you know coach Knight did return last night he spoke to uh, his players he spoke to the folks assembled here outside of Assembly Hall and here's a little bit of what he had to say there's nobody, there's nobody that's ever coached that appreciates the support of students like I have. Yeah. Hopefully, within the next two days, I'm going to get together with as many students who will want to come, and I'm going to tell you my side of this thing. Now, And as you heard, Coach Knight says he will tell his side of the story. The word we're hearing today is that that is going to come in the next 48 hours or so. Now, when he came home from his vacation last night, he found this campus in an uproar. Today, things have calmed down a bit. Eyewitness News reporter Rich Van Wyk has been here all day, and he shows us now how the campus police, students, and others associated with the basketball program took the news today. Happy Monday. Not on the IU campus. These students have grown up not knowing any basketball coach other than Bob Knight. Many aren't sure they want to. You know, every kid's dream was to play for Bobby Knight one day, and you know, now he's gone, so I don't know who they're going to replace him with, but no matter who it is, it won't be the same. The quiet rush to class is a sharp contrast we want Bobby. to yesterday's raucous rush to judgment. Fire Miles Brand! Fire Miles Brand! Thousands of students roamed the Bloomington campus, protesting the firing of coach Bob Knight. They tore down some street lights, a goalpost, and damaged several cars and street signs. Please stay down! Police made 10 arrests. It ended when the fired coach Knight told everyone to go home. Let's give these guys a break so they can get home to their families. Most of the mess was cleaned up by sunrise. Students grappled with life without a coaching legend and the reality of the semester's first exams. I thought it'd be more wild up, but it's, I think it settled down pretty well. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, he's fired and there's nothing we can do about it now. I'm just like, I'm down here to get an education, you know, and uh, like it really doesn't affect my education, but it affects the university. Disrespect of the university, the alumni, the students, he just doesn't deserve to be a coach any longer. He's had, he's had his run here at IU. I go to class. In addition to the police, or in addition to the people arrested last night, there are charges filed against them. Battery, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. 
Two police officers received minor injuries. They went to the hospital. They were treated and released. They're going to be okay. Everyone tonight watching this campus to see what happens. Reporting live from IU, Rich Van Wyk, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And obviously we'll be watching it as well. Thank you, Rich. There is no other Hoosier that can divide the state like Bobby Knight. People either love him or they hate him. And when we opened up our 13 Listen Sound Off line, we got many different opinions about the former coach. And I am not a big supporter of Bob Knight. However, I believe since he had those allegations, um, an investigation back in May, I believe people are on a witch hunt to get him out. Coach Knight says he would have to be an absolute moron to have cursed and grabbed at that young man. Well, he has been an absolute moron for the last how many years? I think the boy should be taught some manners. He should have some respect for his elders, regardless of who the person is. Besides that, it seems strange that his father's in news media. He's already out there harassing Coach Knight. We have people in place for uh, how to raise kids. They are parents and they are teachers. It's not Bob Knight's responsibility to uh, correct this kid. Obviously, a lot of people on campus discussing this situation today, but it wasn't just the talk on the way to class. It was discussed in class as well. Eyewitness News reporter they're reporting live from Bloomington, which is a center of attention today for hundreds of journalists from all over the country as the Bob Knight firing story plays out. We're going to have more on this story coming up through the next hour and a half. But right now, let's take a look at some... ...is greater than ever. Uh, it's just the case that famous people are governed by the extremes of their personality, and there's no doubt that Bob Knight is an icon at a time when we have very few of those, especially in a positive nature uh, in our society. Baylor head basketball coach Dave Bliss, twice an assistant under Bobby Knight. Thanks for joining us on SportsCenter. Thanks. Go Baylor Bear. You have an update. You've spoken with some of the candidates that we mentioned, Charlie Spoonauer uh, and Tom Davis. What do you think? Well, actually, a couple of the guys, uh, Spoonauer and another guy that we talked about, uh, DePaul's Joey Meyer, guys that would fit this criteria, have told me uh, today on Monday that they just feel that it's a very difficult situation to go into this situation after the way that Bob Knight uh, was fired, and it'd be very tough for anyone to come into an interim situation when all the players definitely want Mike Davis. Well, let's talk about Mike Davis. You spoke to him and his feelings on the job. If they offered it to him, where does he stand right now? Well, if he gets that offer within the next two days, he will stay, and so will most of the players. A lot of the players are threatening to transfer, but it's not that easy. But Davis said if he gets the offer, he will stay, basically regardless what Coach Knight says on the matter, because this is important for the players. All right, Andy, we alluded to earlier in the show the fact that Isaiah Thomas is talking about the idea of bringing Bob Knight onto his staff with the Pacers. A little while ago, we were able to bring in that sound of, of Isaiah Thomas talking about that. Let's listen to that now. Teaching methods that... Uh, he has. Uh, they benefited me. They benefited a lot of other players. Um, you know, like I say, and you couldn't find a more brilliant mind in the game of basketball. And I clearly would like to have access to that mind. Interesting, Andy, in one sense, because Isaiah and Bobby had a love-hate relationship during his time in Bloomington. But do you see out any possibility of Bob Knight moving as an assistant in the NBA? Not as a true assistant, but what you could see, and Isaiah actually went on to talk about Tex Winter and Phil Jackson with the Chicago Bulls, serving in that kind of role where Winter was actually more of a, a true assistant, but Knight could be that consultant for Isaiah. This is his first foyer into to head coaching here at this level at the NBA, and he really could use a good tactician like Bob Knight. ESPN.com's Andy Katz, who broke the story. Northwestern, Purdue, 15th. And since that time, university officials say that it took seven incidents like this to lead to the end of Coach Knight's tenure here. The latest one involved 19-year-old between. Not enough evidence to warrant criminal charges. Tests last night and continued to harass the freshman, campus police say, by email and on the phone. We're taking them quite seriously and we've, we've offered the, the family as well as the Harveys and all concern additional security should they feel that it's necessary. The Harvey incident is just one of seven documented actions that troubled President Miles Brand since he first disciplined Knight in May. One particular exchange involved the coach and university attorney Dorothy Frapwell during a discussion the two had about former assistant coach Ron Felling's potential legal action against IU. It went from testy to enraged, and there was profanity used toward her by the coach. It got to the point where she felt intimidated, and she told the coach, this is no longer productive, I'm going to leave, and he said something to the effect of, that's fine, you should leave. 
Another sore spot is Knight's refusal to attend three high-profile alumni events, the annual basketball tip-off lunches for IU grads. You go to Chicago and you have a crowd of 1,000, 1,200 people. I mean, it gives you some idea of the, the interest in basketball, men's basketball. It will undoubtedly affect IU's fundraising pocketbook. University officials concede. The question now is just how much. And then there is the and then there is the taunting and flaunting of top university officials. As an IU vice president described it, Coach Knight repeatedly made quote extraordinarily condescending and inflammatory remarks about several university trustees. As far as Kent Harvey goes, that freshman. We're told by several sources he will not be in class here on IU's campus for the next two weeks. John? All right, thank you very much, Jeremy. You know, this all has started, this final string of events started last Thursday when Knight had that option to resign, and when Knight refused, Brand told him that Knight would be fired as head basketball coach here at IU. Now, when IU President Miles Brand told the press that he was firing Coach Knight, he said that the majority of the Board of Trustees was behind him. We get more now on the perspective of the board from Eyewitness News reporter Kevin Rader. Indiana University has a legendary reputation for basketball, and the only thing that could overshadow it was the man who helped craft it. With a nationally televised interview about the Neil Reed incident, followed by yet another news conference dealing with the Kent Harvey incident, to many, Bob Knight was doing just that. It raises certainly the level of the university on everybody's radar. On the other hand, I'm tired of all the negative publicity. As a member of the Board of Trustees at his alma mater, Peter Abremsky, a lawyer in Lebanon, brings an interesting perspective to the night question because he also captained IU's 1958 Big Ten basketball championship team. Yeah, I support his decision, but uh, I'm loyal to Knight, and would I have dismissed Knight over this? Probably not, but it was building. Country. Trustee Stephen Backer says Bob Knight put zero effort into zero tolerance. There's no apparent effort on Coach Knight's part to even come close to meeting the guidelines that were set forth to him. Guidelines, which President Miles Brand said and the two trustees Eyewitness News spoke to, agreed, were clearly defined in writing. But Knight told the crowd in front of Assembly Hall Sunday night that he would tell his side of the story on Tuesday. Coach Knight has always been an expert at making everybody else the blame for his problems. But Backer says IU's high-profile basketball program has already attracted interest from another high-profile college basketball coach whom he refused to identify, but which proves the Board of Trustees' point. You know, no person is bigger than Indiana University, and anybody that believes so is just totally off base. Now, out of the nine trustees, we spoke to five today who say they fully support President Ban's decision. Two others are still out of the country, including President John Walta, who was down for supporting the decision, and two others who did not return our phone calls. But in all, five of the trustees we spoke to today said they fully support President Miles, and they, Miles Brand, and they say that their support for him is unwavering. In the newsroom, Kevin Rader, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. All right, Kevin, and I guess that would be a majority if we have five of nine saying that. Thank you very much. The loyalty of the players you've recruited who do want you to take over? Well, it's, it's not a conflict because uh, I mean, coach feel the same way about the players, you know. And so it's not a conflict at all. I just, just hate it went down like this. Well, still to come on SportsCenter, Barry Bonds.